Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today our quest letter came to us from West Yarmouth, Massachusetts. Cole wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, how do they make wax into candles of different shapes, sizes, and colors? Well Cole, because of you, we are out here in the city of Los Angeles, California at Modern Candle where we're going to learn how they make candles. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. We're inside the front offices of Modern Candle and I'm here with Arvin. Arvin, tell me a little bit about the company. Yeah, so we're a family business. Uh, we've been in the business for about 25 years. Uh, my father, uh, we're Armenian. Uh, he came from Iran, Tehran in 1989. He came here and uh, he pretty much started the business all over again in a little 10 by 10 booth in our parking spot in our apartment and grew it into this 35,000 square foot uh, facility. You said he started it again, so he had this business back in his native country? Yeah, he started it over there. He got you know all the techniques and learned everything there and came over here. Really? It started this little tiny booth where you lived, huh? Yep, exactly. Wow, so how did you come into the picture? Because you're fairly young, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just been a it's family business, so ever since I've been born, I've been dealing with candles. I've been pouring candles since I was four years old. Really? Yep. <laughs> Wow, and so when you pull up, it does it, it's a very small lot up front, but the facility is huge. You said, how big is this? Yeah, this facility right here is about 10,000 square feet. Yeah. And then we have another uh, warehouse that's about 15,000 square feet. And I understand you send candles all over the world now. All over the world. Wow, how many different types of candles do you guys make? Many, about hundreds to thousands of different types of candles. All right, so what are we gonna be learning today? Today we're gonna be learning pretty much um, how every rock component comes um, to us and how we fill that into the candle, package it, and ship it out. Well, before we get started, I'd love to hear, how do you think candles are made? At some point, the material is melted and put into a mold of some kind, but there's a wick that goes in the middle, and the candle is usually rolled around the wick. From wax put into a mold? Wax, some sort of string. A mold, then wax, string, fragrance. Well, first they get a mold, then they fill the mold with wax. The hot materials or wax being put into a mold to shape it. All right, we're back in the factory, and I gotta tell you, Arvin, the first thing when we walked through that door was the smell. It smells so good back here, yeah. like candles. Yeah, we always get the neighborhood asking the same question. They're curious to know where it's coming from, and it's our factory. All right, so what are we gonna be doing right now? So right now I'm gonna show you, this is how we get our wax gums. It comes in block form or powder. Okay. So we get it in Whoa. a couple <laughs> of different forms. Yep, sometimes oh. it breaks apart. And what we do is we take these blocks uh -huh. and right behind us we have what is called a melter. We put these blocks inside the melter and each one of these melters has its own wax combination. When you say wax combination, what are you referring to? So we have a couple of different waxes. So we have coconut wax, soy wax, paraffin wax, which is the main ones. Uh -huh. And then we have blends. So sometimes we have a coconut uh, soy blend or coconut paraffin and soy. Oh. Kind of all over the place. So uh, I'm curious, why would you need a coconut blend versus a soy blend versus a pair of what? <laughs> a <laughs> paraffin. Paraffin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why, why would you need different blends? Well, uh, there's different companies that want different blends. So with soy and coconut, you can clean natural. And then we also have um, some blends where you can use for massage. So that includes some apricot oil, some sheer butter. What is wax made of? Water and clay. Milk, dried milk, something like that. Oils, soy, and paraffin, and beeswax. It is made of animal fat. Sometimes beeswax? Paraffin, or bees, wax. Just extract from plants or certain animals. We have quite a bit of wax here. Yep. And what are we gonna be doing with this? So we're gonna put it in the melters. Okay. And oh, wow. oh, is it okay that I broke it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, which melt are we going to? We're gonna go to the one back there. Oh, back there. Oh, okay. So we grab more wax. Huh? Yeah. yeah. We grab one. You got some more? Yep. All right, there we go. So here's the melter that okay. specifically takes this wax. 
All right, and it's, there's, so there's a different melter per wax? Yeah, so we have, all these melters have a different combination of wax. We hold about anywhere from 10,000 to 15,000 pounds of wax at any given time. How many different combinations of wax do you have? Generally, we have about 10 to 15. All right, so we have this wax that we're gonna be putting in here, and we just toss it in, right? No, you can't just toss it in. That's very bad. You can get a lot of wax on your face, and it's not gonna be very pleasant. Okay. So what you wanna do, you wanna just slowly drop the wax in, Ooh. just like that. And how hot, oh, is that the temperature? Yep, wax generally melts at anywhere from 150 degrees to 170 degrees. Oh, okay. Which would be very hot for my hands. Yes. Now, can you think about like if you take a hot shower, you're probably around 100 degrees ish. What temperature does a wax need to be in order to melt? 500 degrees. 70. 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Just over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the 200 range? Um, 175. I'm gonna put my pieces in right here. You said just slowly go right there. Okay, I did, I did get a little splash up. Yep. So can we actually use this wax right now or do we have to wait for those large pieces to melt? No, we can use this wax right now because there is some wax in here that is in liquid form. Oh, okay, so it doesn't all have to be in liquid form in order to use it, wow. Yep. All right, so are we using this thing to empty the wax out? No, not this one, but we're gonna be using this pot over here. Kick this out of the way here. <laughs> oh. That's incredible because it looks just like, like water. Yeah, exactly. It flows just like water as well. But it's hot. It's really hot. Uh, and, it's, and it looks like butter down there. Yeah. So we're just going to need about that much. And where are we going? We're going, we're going to go to the kitchen. Go to the kitchen. All right, I'll follow you. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. The world's largest candle is over 22 feet tall. All right, Arvin, we're in the kitchen. And I got to tell you, it is hot in the kitchen. Yeah. Hey, this is the hottest part of the factory. This is full of wax right there, right? Yep. That's how we got to keep it usual. Woo, and that's full of wax, and it's, are these different colored waxes? Yeah, this is different colored waxes, different fragrance, so almost about every single one of these pots have a different formulation. Wow, okay. Um, this is a weird question, but we just heated the wax up over there, and we emptied it out, and now we're putting it on here to heat it up again. We're, no, no, we're not heating it up again. Okay. We're keeping a stable temperature. And what do you, we have an optimal temperature that you're trying to keep it at? Yeah, anywhere from 150 to 170 is about where you're trying to keep it, but every uh, wax has a different melt point. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add some dyes, and we're also gonna add some fragrance in here. So we're gonna Ooh. be making a lavender color, and we're gonna put some lily fragrance in here. Like ordinary dyes that are changing the colors of whatever you're putting it in? Yeah, so they gotta be oil-based because we are working with oil. Okay. Oh, she's not like dumping stuff in. She's just putting little drops nope. in. All you need is a couple of drops. So obviously just mixing it up. And she's making it as dark as the two vats right next to it. Yep. All right, now what's she putting in? Oil. Oil, huh? And what's the oil for? This is going to be going into a pillar candle, which is a freestanding candle. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple different types of styles. Um, this is what we're going to be making the model. And when you put mineral oil in there, it starts um, giving the effect. And we'll get into that later. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is like... The pre, so we put that in there and we'll talk about it later. Exactly. Right? Okay, I like that. And so she keeps going, she's measuring stuff over there. We have more stuff, what do we have here? This is a lily fragrance. A the, lily? the color of the candle is gonna be a lavender candle, so oh. kind of purple. How do they get the scent in the wax? During the melting process, they mix it together and... I think they dip the wax in a certain t mm, scent. Maybe they like crush up the fruit or something like that and put it in. Um, they melt the, whatever the scent's gonna be smelt of. It would be like if I was gonna, for example, blueberry, they would melt a blueberry, mix it into the wax, and then um, do the whole process of making the candle. Chemicals from objects, like for the pumpkin pie one, they probably use pumpkin extracts of some sort. I would say um, liquid extracts. Just through chemicals and products and plants, just extracts from that. <laughs> and she pours it into the room temperature water to make sure that she's got the right color going. Do you like the color? Yeah? You're good with the color? <laughs> now what? <laughs> now we go on to the tables. Okay. All right, let's go. So we're just going to open these up. All right. And we're just going to 
throw them on the table for now. These are like glass, right? Yeah, this is glass. Oh. It's actually frosted glass. Okay. That's what we call it. You, you want them more like that, right? Well, no. We're gonna we're gonna set it up that way once we wick it. Oh, wick it, huh? Ooh. All right. So how do you wick a candle? Taking string, tying something at the bottom so it anchors, dropping it into your mold, pouring the wax in, and letting it set. Like blow it out or something? <laughs> Light the candle. Make it twisted. What does it mean to wick a candle? Uh, that's the string that goes in there that you need to light to get the wax to melt, get the scent. To put the wick inside of it so that the wick can be used. I think it means to cut off the string that's in the middle. So what she has right there is it's very, very hot glue. You do not want to get this glue on your hands, not okay. even a little drop. <laughs> because once it gets on you, you're going to have to be rubbing it off. It's going to take a bunch of hairs off. <laughs> OK. Well, I got plenty to go, so that might not be a bad idea. That's what we like to call a wick tab. A wick tab? A wick tab. Oh, tab. Yeah. So what we do is we dip the tab into the hot glue. Mm -hmm. We give it a little shake onto the side so we don't get any drops coming out. Mm -hmm. And we like to eyeball it out and send it into the glass. So just like this and then dab tap. it a little bit. Is that good? Yeah. OK. And then you want to take it right into the middle. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Candles can be made from soy, beeswax, paraffin, and coconut oil. We don't want to get the wax to become a solid form or get anywhere near that. So while it's st staying hot and there's no stove underneath, we try to move quickly to get that wax into the candle. It's like pouring out of a tea kettle, basically. Yeah. Wow, and you, so you're not worried about where the wick is landing or lining up? No, not right now. So once the wax starts becoming solid form, it becomes into like this little mushy type of solid. So we can move the wick and center it then. Oh, so you will move it at some point. OK. But it's a waste of time right now because it's too liquidy. Yeah. Can we make that a word? I mean, liquidy is it a, I think, I think we're going with liquidy, right? We could say liquidy. All right, I'm curious. What is your favorite candle scent? My favorite candle scent is definitely lavender. Lavender. And I love the smell of cinnamon candles. What is your favorite type of candle scent? Vanilla. Probably blueberry. Vanilla. Pumpkin pie. Root beer. Probably more floral. Mulled cider. All right. <laughs> Are we banging the pots together? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so you can finish off that one if you want. Okay, you want me to hold that right there so I don't finish off that one? Is that good? Yeah. More. So, you can more. put a little bit more. A little bit more? Yeah. All right. That should be right about fine. That's good. This, this tea kettle makes it really easy to pour. Wow, there we go. Right there. And you don't want to pour on the wick, right? No, you don't, because it's going to start splashing all over to the sides. I normally um, don't do well in factories. I should have told you that before we started, but I think I found my place. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that Native Americans crafted their candles out of sap from trees? So this is where you pull the wicks up. Just like you're doing? Yeah, so when we first had them, when we poured them, they were yeah. tilted onto the side. Yeah. And when the wax is not too cold, and it's right up the middle of the drying stage, we pull them to the center so it's doing it at ease. And now is what we call the second pour. Why are we second pouring? So we second pour because when wax is in a liquid form and it's hot, it expands. And now because it becomes solid, it, it shrinks. So it doesn't get to that right level. So we have to have another pour on top to make sure that we're still filling at the correct level. It's like a measuring tool she's using? Yeah, so she'll, what she's doing, she's just putting that right there. So the second she touches that is where she knows she has to stop pouring. Now, I just realized when you pull the wicks up, it's leaving a, um, I don't know if you can see, but it's leaving a uh, line in the candle. Yeah. You probably don't want that going out like that, right? No, so it's definitely not going to do it. That's what the second pour does, and it pretty much eliminates that. Wow. So after you've done the second pour, what next? Next, once it cools, we're going to pretty much do the finishing touches for this. Okay. And um, it's pretty much just heating the top, cleaning up the candle, making sure there's uh, no drops outside of the candle that has wax on it. Oh, like I did? Or, or somewhat like that. So even though we st stood the uh, wicks up, we still have some of the wicks laying down here. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is first got to trim the wicks. Oh. 
Okay. So that's what she's gonna do. Wick mold is still in there. Yeah, so what's gonna happen now, She, what we call is pretty much um, burning the tops. Okay, so. Yeah, so what she's doing, she's taking the heat gun, taking it about a quarter inch off the surface of the candle. Turning it into a liquid. Yeah, yes. turning it into a liquid. Wow. And what that does, once it settles, it just becomes a smooth top. So you can mess it up again and then just reheat it again exactly. and fix it. And, and it'll settle real nice and perfect at this point. Yes. That is crazy. What she, is it just like a heat gun? Or yeah, what is it? it's just typically like any type of heat gun you get. It's like a blow dryer, but it's an industrial blow dryer. Okay. And then how long again before it's done and ready to go? This you need about 30 minutes. And then what you generally have to do is you gotta let the candle sit and chill for 24 hours before you can actually ship it out. Okay, wow. So all the candles that I see on the tables here behind me, these are all going out, what, tomorrow? Yeah, these are all gonna go out tomorrow. Well, they're gonna be packed today, but they're gonna be leaving tomorrow. Wow, that is amazing. I always wondered how they make these, like these freestanding candles without being in a jar. Oh, it's oil oily. Did I touch it too soon? No, <laughs> it's totally fine. So how we make that is we have molds, aluminum okay. molds. And in these molds, what we do is we just line them up just how we were over there on the okay. table. So we want to leave about maybe half an inch gap in between each other. So we're literally just going to pour right in. We're going to pour right in. Oh, wow. OK. So she's going to show you how this one is poured. This one's a little bit harder than the other. OK. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking you. You thought I had that other one down pretty good. Because you're like, this is a little bit harder than the other one. Did you have that other one good. Yeah, you don't have a tea, tea kettle on this one. Oh, no tea kettle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Why is she using that funnel? It's a lot faster. And if she just pours from there, it's just gonna spill over the place. If she uses a tea kettle, it's gonna pour too slow. Wow, that, that's hot. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh. Oh, wow. Okay, that's not pouring as, uh, as calmly as the tea kettle. There we go. I just gotta slow down, right? Why am I dripping? She wasn't dripping. She's been here a lot longer than you have. <laughs> she went really fast. I'm taking way too long. And we're going all the way to the top? All the way to the top. Wow, good, more? Oh, are you eating more? Just, that should be fine. Is it good? Yep. Wow, I'm making a mess on your table, sorry. Totally fine, that that's actually happens a lot during the filling pillar candles. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm just par for the course, basically. Oh, there we go. That was a much better pour, right? Yes, definitely. Clean pour. Oh. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Did you hear that? Both of them went, whoa. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's perfect. You guys were worried? Look at that. How long does melted wax take in order to become a solid? 11 or 9, 10 seconds. At least 10 minutes. A minute, maybe. I think a matter of minutes. I'm sure it's, it depends on the cooling. So it depends on how hot it was when it was melted, and then that will determine how long it takes to cool it off and to mold it. Let's say 12 hours. Uh, about an hour or two. So how long does it take a candle go from a liquid to a solid? So depending on the size, the general drying time takes about anywhere from three to six hours. Three to so, six? Yeah, you can get a little you know, small candle, just like the ones right there that can take anywhere from an hour or two, or when you have these guys, where it takes anywhere from three to four hours to completely dry. Three to four hours, okay, cool. So now that they're they're dry and they're, they're how do we get them out of here? So what she's gonna do, is she's gonna set the candle to the side, mm -hmm. and she's gonna roll it and heat up oh, pretty much the aluminum. Dude, what's up with the blowtorch? Keep pulling the blowtorch out. We like heating up things in here. <laughs> we just do like a pass back, well, that's not hot on her hands? Nope. And, what she, and what, it's just a little release for it. And what she's doing is she's using air yeah. to push that candle out. Do you have any idea how many of these we can do in a day? Uh, these, we can probably do about roughly three to 4,000 a day on this side. <laughs> Whoa! Uh-oh, we got, we got one stuck. Yeah, so sometimes time time gets stuck, you gotta play around with it. But there is no challenge too big to overcome. It looks beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it looks like we got some stuff going on up here. What, what are we gonna do about this? No worries, so the next step actually is where we saw off both sides to make the sides uh, flush. Oh wow. And if you've noticed before, when we added that mineral oil, you see how it gives that little cloudy effect? It does, yeah, I That's do where we get it. 
Ah, that's why we were doing the mineral. I get it now. Okay. How many in your lifetime? About how many of these molds do you think you've uh, removed from the candle? Oh wow, thousands, thousands, thousands. to the hundred thousands. Yeah. So now we have to go cut. Now we're gonna go cut. All right, let's go. Here we go. Stop. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Thirty-five percent of candles are purchased during the Christmas holiday season. Why are we cutting here? We're cutting it so we can make on each side a straight edge. And also on this particular style of candle, if you see, the style starts to fade away at the ends. So we want to chop that off oh. and make sure that the entire style of the candle is flush. You don't want to have that curve in there, right? No, not at all. Now we just cut off both sides. And this is where we pretty much finish off the candle and make the finding touches. OK. So what she's going to do is she's going to start burning the sides. What, you, what would you do without a blowtorch here? <laughs> Not much. We can't do much without it. <laughs> so she's pretty much what she's doing, smoothing out the sides, getting it all even. Oh, now she's going to iron the oh, bottom. She's ironing. <laughs> wow. And what's that she just rubbed it on? That is what we call another iron. Wow, that is really smooth. OK. Can I rub this on it? Or yeah, is it totally. too, my, too Yeah, you can. Out? So what you want to do is just lightly give it a rub. You don't oh. want to really push on it too long. Let me put it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Right? Too much? No. Oh, I did it wrong. See, I did it wrong. I thought I was going <laughs> to... <laughs> Let me take that away from you. I'll fix that. And I didn't realize she's actually putting the wick in right after she's yeah, done. Yeah, so she's putting the wick in, too. So once she's um, melting the bottom, mm -hmm. what it's doing, it's creeping onto the wick at the same time. And, and then it's pretty much finished at this point. Yes. All you have to do is slap on a little warning label, put it in a box, and ship it out. Okay. Now, why a warning label? Warning label because you always have to have the safety regulations on there to make sure that whoever's buying this product knows how to use it. So you got to trim it at a certain length. Uh, make sure you don't light it more than three hours at a time. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Is that pretty universal for all candles? Yeah, that's universal for all candles. I didn't realize that. That's some good safety tip right there. So when you're lighting a candle, make sure it doesn't go beyond three hours. Three hours, and you want to make sure the wick is no bigger than an eighth or a quarter of an inch. Oh, so you're saying there's a limit to how big this wick has to be on the candle. Yeah, so if you just leave it and you never trim your wick, you're going to get a lot of smoking going on and a really big flame. Back here in a cubby hole now. What's going on back here? Yeah, so other than just filling candles, um, we also do some decoration. So we paint in house, so we can pretty much match any standard Panzone color. We do gloss sprays, we do matte sprays, we also do transparent. And he's going to show you how to how it kind of works. Okay. So taking our so you just get the cups in just normally like that, just regular clear cups. Yep, just in clear cups. And what he did, he just turned on the vacuum. That's going to suck any overspray wow. up into it. So he's literally spraying. I thought those cups we saw were like the glass was blown green or red. No. But we do get glass sometimes like that. But because we have a, a wide range of customers, some of them want to do a really low volume. So we offer this service so we can meet those requirements. We also do two tones. Oh, wow. So we spray one black, and then we spray over it again to give it two tones. Let me see that one here. That is. That is so cool. Look at that, two-tone. I just, it's hard to believe that this is done by hand, one by one by one. And then here is the process. He's still spraying from the outside, but it gives a matte finish. And all of these started off as clear glasses. Exactly. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Listen to this. Candles are used in seven out of 10 US households. Why is it important to do quality control when making candles? Instead of using energy, things like that. Um, so you don't burn yourself or freeze your hand off. Because, so it doesn't start like a fire. To keep it consistent, make sure um, there aren't any bubbles or anything so it doesn't fall or when it melts. Uh, just so that the product can actually be used safely so there's no fires and stuff like that. Gosh, you, the last thing you want is to have materials that aren't safe for people. You don't want a fire. Arvin, why is it important to do a quality control test on candles? 
because you want to make sure, number one, that the candle is safe. You don't want to start a fire, you don't want to burn somebody's hands, and number two, you want to make sure that the performance is right. So you don't want to make sure that you're using up all the candle and not having the tunneling effect. And what the tunneling effect is, is when you have the outer edge still available and it's not using up all of its juice. So is that an example of what tunneling effect, I mean that's what it looks like right there, right? Exactly. So you got that big, huge, okay, I see that. So what a good burning candle would look like is any one of these guys right here. You see there's still a little edge, but as the flame goes down, it's still gonna burn the walls and it, the wax is slowly gonna be coming out. And another thing that you don't want is the entire pool to be liquid, because that means then your flame is too big. And it's gonna, oh. if someone just decides to pick up that candle, they're gonna burn their hand. Oh, okay. Well, how, you know, you see those big, huge, thick ones. You had a few of them back there, the yeah. big, large ones, like the pillar ones. Mm -hmm. Do those burn any different than these ones in glass? No, they burn similarly the same, but the only difference where we have to keep an eye out for is to make sure that when we get to those walls, we're not getting, we're not getting too thin because as it's melting down, you're still gonna have a chunk of that. You can't completely burn the sides. Gotcha. How long should you safely burn a candle for? <sighs> I'd say two to three hours. 20 minutes? A couple of hours, three or so, four, maybe. Hour? A day at most. Two hours. Maybe a half an hour to an hour. Arvin, how long should you burn a candle for? You should burn it for three hours on and three hours off. But in the testing process, what we do is we do the same procedure, three hours on, three hours off. But we want to burn it at least all the way to the bottom to be sure that we have the right wick. So these will be burning for a few days. A few days, definitely. On and off and on and off. Exactly. Hey, Arvin, I want to thank you so much. No problem, it's a pleasure. Appreciate it, man. I want to thank Arvin, I want to thank everyone here at Modern Candle for teaching us how they make candles. And I especially want to thank you, Cole, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sparks our next flame for what show we pick. And remember, every great adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder, what are you curious about? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Where'd he go? In my candles. Harvin!